Hello everyone, in this video we're going to create a playable raft, like the ones we can see in games like Zelda. The interesting thing here is that we're actually using the game creator character controller for the raft as well. So no third party controllers, all is done with out of the box solutions. In order to create this we will need Unity and Game Creator. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the absolutely amazing support. So this is a really simple scene, so we have our player here. Now my player has the ability to swim, which is the only thing that sets him apart, and that's from the swimming tutorial. Other than that, we have a couple of basic blocks. So we have our piece of land, if you will, the beach area, which is just a pro builder object, and we have the water volume, which is this one big block with a transparent shader, a bit of color, and it, the entire area is a trigger and is tagged to water. So that's in order to be able to swim, so nothing also interesting. Now this model is available in the descriptions as well, I just made it with Pro Builder, so nothing all too exciting, but it fits the purpose of the tutorial. So in order to set this up, let's actually start off with creating our player. And this player is going to be our model as well. So let's actually drag it on our boat here. There we go. Let's try this one. Perfect. That's about in the middle. Now we're not going to see the body of course, so I'm just going to turn those off for now and we're going to drag our model inside of this player. Now to avoid some confusion, let's call this one raft and yeah, you know, now our raft has become, our player controller has become the raft. So let's actually adjust some of these settings here. So by default he's not controllable. He can swim a bit faster. Let's put this to, I don't know, 60. Not really sure what I originally had. Falling speed is zero, and that's literally how we can float. Um, the boat can't jump, so I mean, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So nothing all too special. Uh, just a couple of ch changes here and obviously you can do a lot more if you want with locomotion, mo movement, etc. But we're just going to keep it really simple here. Now inside of this raft we're going to create a empty and this will be our trigger area. So let's call this one trigger. And it's a bit south, which is a bit strange. There we go, that's our trigger. And let's add a box collider. And let's resize this one. This is about right. Yeah. Now the important thing here is we're actually going to manually be able to toggle if we want to sail the boat or not. So it's not that you automatically sail it when you jump on. So that's why the area can be a bit bigger. That's completely fine. And this is going to be a trigger. Now there's two more things we need to set up and I still had it. So let me remove that. And that is a camera motor. So I'm actually just going to duplicate the one for the player. So this is a basic adventure motor. I'm going to duplicate that one, recall it motor raft. And the initial zoom will be six or eight, can't remember. And I don't allow zoom, but you know, you can play around with these settings and do whatever makes you happy really. Then on this raft, we are going to create a marker. 
and this marker is where our player will move to once he starts controlling the boat and I'm pretty sure I'm fine with this. Now obviously controlling the boat with some nice animations would be absolutely amazing but we're just going to keep it to the actual control here you can mess around with your own animations yourself it's all about control so let's keep it simple now the next thing we are going to do and I'm actually going to drag this in the trigger already and I'm going to create another thing and drag it in the trigger which is a canvas let's make sure this is world space and let's resize it all good exposition is 10 and 10 let's try to find our oh there we go well 10 seems a bit high and let's drag this here perfect that's good let's put it a bit higher there we go so we're going to add some text here let's resize this there we go and the text will be press 8 to control use whatever doesn't matter much and let's center this and make it the text a bit bigger now one thing that's really important to point out is this is obviously not realistic water in terms of behavior and physics I would definitely recommend using a decent paid asset for this. Um, it's going to be a nightmare to create that yourself. There is absolutely amazing water assets out there. So I would definitely recommend just using those. And unless you kind of want to torture yourself, I wouldn't go through the hassle really. Perfect. So there we have our canvas. I'm going to disable this by default. And our trigger here will have some trigger components. So it's the first one. Second one, let's change this to player enter, player exit. And the last one will be key down. Now there will be one button that activates and deactivates sailing, so it would just be the one. This will need a action and this will need a condition. So the first action here will be set active and it will activate our canvas. I'm going to copy that, go over to the second action and deactivate that. So basically once we enter this area, the canvas will appear. But the canvas serves as more than just a piece of text with instructions. It actually will be a type of variable bool we're going to use. So the condition for controlling this boat <coughs> will be based on our canvas as well. So if our canvas is empty, uh, activated, we will be able to control it and otherwise we won't. So let's rename this start and end just to keep things a bit easier to find. Actually, let me remove this end one for now. And we're going to start off with this one. So first thing we're going to do, and this is going to be a bit strange, but we're actually going to mess around with components so we drag in our player and hook player is going to be turned off and I'll explain in a bit why I'm going to move our character and this will be our player to this marker and this marker will be 
this one. There we go. This has wait until it arrives, so everything else will wait until it's done. Then we're going to change property and our character. And that will be our raft, will be controllable. We're going to do a false component again and just let's just copy that and this will be character controller. And we're going to change our camera to our ref one. And let's give this a transition time of one. And there we have it. Now, the reason we're disabling these components is because a default, and that's something we actually still need to do, and I completely forgot that. Transform, there we go. A default transform of the player parent um, didn't seem to work for me. And maybe I did something wrong, but I've tried and it honestly just didn't seem to work. So let's drag that up here. And maybe that's because the new parent is also a game creator player and that's why it works a bit different than with the car controller. Um, but doing it this way actually works. So it's just two components we need to set this active and that's pretty much it. I'm going to duplicate this one, rename it to end and we're going to drag it in here and the reason for duplication is simply because it's a lot easier I'm going to remove the move player we're going to clear the parent we're going to turn this back off and we're going to turn this back on and we're going to drag in our old camera so just a bit easier to do it this way really so yeah, a couple of the basics here. Now, I'm going to add one more thing and that's actually character state. I'm going to do that straight after moving him and our player will change state and this time I'm actually going to use a different one. So I'm just going to use a random idle. There we go, archery idle. Instead of sitting down, it just looks slightly better. I'm going to copy that one as well and let's just reset his state. Cool. So yeah, a couple of really strange steps maybe, but let's actually see how this plays out for now. So as you can see, we're walking around, jumping around and the boat is not affected. And we're going to use eight to control and we can control our boats. And obviously movement might not be completely ideal for a boat, but you know, think about the fact that you need some realistic water physics anyway. So that will change a lot. So yeah, if we press eight again, well, nothing is actually happening if we press eight again. So that's definitely interesting. Cool. So, yeah, small mistake here, and I didn't actually think of that. I completely exaggerated with my trigger area as so much that we're still standing in the trigger while we're on the marker, and that's something we shouldn't be doing. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Let's just do it like this. There we go. And let's give this another go. Cool. And yay, we're controlling the boat. And if we press 8 again, we're not controlling it anymore. And we can just, you know, swim, jump, and yeah, that's it. So, pretty cool. Now, there's a couple of 
small details you can mess around with so for example have him automatically stop the boats um, return at some points and that's just the same as we did with the water so working with trigger um, with colliders really so we can for example add a, another trigger on our right here and that will be now how shall we call this um, exit on tag exit there we go we have to tag water and what we're going to do here is we're just going to drag in those same same action so we're going to drag in end and it will end the behavior as well so if we're no longer in water we won't be able to control it so let's actually have a look at this water and as you can see I already dragged this out a bit but it was definitely not enough because just like a boat would have there's some acceleration deacceleration etc so maybe do it like this I'm not really sure I'm just messing around here there we go so we're going to control our boat here really cool and it will automatically force us off if we're on land so that's you know one of those small details you can add just really playing with volumes now obviously there's a lot more you can do so you can have some decent water physics as well I use one of the action pack one floating animations to have actions to have him float the, the raft float a bit but truth be told it's better to actually look into some decent water assets to have some more realistic water effects so i would definitely not use any de default volumes like i'm using for water if you're going to do this get yourself some good assets so that was it really really simple hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit like and subscribe and i will see you next time